Um, my name is Kelsey Danner. I am a program manager with AWS. I've been here about five years now, um, working with technology partners the whole time. Hi, everybody. I'm Chris Gardner. I, uh, I've been with AWS for about the last two and a half years, focused on go-to-market strategy with our ISVs, uh, and I'm currently a strategic ISV success manager based up in Seattle. Awesome. So this session, um, as it's titled, is specifically geared towards you as, as ISVs or technology partners. Um, as technology partners, you guys are kind of in an interesting, um, interesting place for AWS. Not only are you our customers, and sometimes our largest and most demanding customers, uh, but you are also uh, partners, a technology partner with us um, and with other technology partners in our community. Uh, so it makes you uh, doubly unique and doubly valuable to, to AWS. Um, Um, can you guys all hear me? Yes, okay, good. It's our first silent speaker session. So the headphone thing is a little bit different for us. <laughs> so one of the, one of the big we, uh, things that we wanted to cover today was how AWS helps you go. And of course, we've got a lot of fun, colorful boxes and stuff up here. But uh, there's going to be a couple key thematics that we're going to go over today. Um, and, and some of those we'll drill really deep into. Um, one of those is going to be faster time to market. There's a lot of programs that we have developed across the entire uh, APN uh, at varying levels of maturity that'll help increase your time to market. Uh, another area that we'll focus on a lot is iteration and kind of constant innovation. Uh, and then of course, there's some very uh, interesting pieces uh, for a lot of you out there that are trying to figure out how to leverage AWS to expand uh, kind of your different market presence meet new demand, get in front of customers, and really be able to leverage kind of the breadth and depth that AWS has as an organization. And there's a number of things up here that as customers are, are pretty um, easy to understand, like lowering business risk is obviously an, an advantage on AWS. You have um, key security measures that we put in place and some of our top customers uh, and regulated industries leverage. So um, that's it's an obvious one. But some of the ones that aren't as obvious up here are increasing employee education. So not only do you guys as customers have access to our full training and certification portfolio um, and all of those things that we offer for free, but we also offer you trainings that are specifically for you as technology partners and how to make your solutions applications better for customers. Um, and it's a whole other breadth of training and uh, materials that are available to you. Uh, it also keeps you up to date on our newest services, things that are going to be announced, things like that that you get for being a partner um, with us and not just a customer. The other thing is increasing profitability. So yes, um, having access to our, our price drops and having access to our, our infrastructure and scale uh, continues to make you more profitable um, within your own business. So this all really centers around the APN or the AWS partner network. So there are some basic economies of, of working with us and being part of the partner network. So first of all, of the Fortune 100 companies, 90% utilize at least one AWS partner solution. Um, and, and most of them use many more than that. There's also close to a million current subscriptions of software on the AWS marketplace where you can uh, market yourselves and have customers directly purchase your, your software from the marketplace. Um, some other things that we've realized in working with technology partners over the years is that there, the tiers and certifications and things we put in place as part of our partner program um, are genuinely meaningful. We see the partners that have invested in our advanced tier, for instance. Um, we've seen them grow at a rate uh, over and above and beyond what other technology companies on us um, have been able to grow. We also see that uh, new solutions or features launched with us in the last two years have seen those partners grow their cloud business, again, exponentially, uh, double or triple what it currently was before launch. So this slide, we could probably stand here and talk about it all day long. <laughs> this is basically the centerpiece of everything that we'll talk to you about today. Uh, there's a lot of things on here that are really core to how to be successful on AWS and leverage all the programs, tools, and resources available to you. The first one that I'm gonna talk about um, is very top, it's about gaining credibility. So just being part of the partner program puts you on a shorter list of technology companies that we trust, that our AWS field trusts, that our solutions architects look to. Um, but there's also a number of certification and differentiation programs that you can be a part of that put you on an even shorter list. So if you invest in something like an AWS competency, all of a sudden, you've gone from tens of thousands of partners that are in our partner network to just down to a list of a handful that are really truly experts and certified and validated in a particular area. Um, 
So we, I work with a wonderful team of subject matter experts that um, go deep into all of these areas. They take great pride in boosting things like the competency, raising the bar year over year to make sure that the, it really is the true new bar for customers and what we expect uh, technology applications to be able to deliver. Um, and the partners that end up in their competency programs, for instance, they'll be on a first name basis with everybody in that leadership team. They take that relationship really seriously, they really invest in it, and that's the way to go from tens of thousands, like I said, to just a handful that not only that subject matter expert team, but also our AWS field, other customers, other partners are gonna look to, to be an expert um, and knowledgeable and trust their solutions. One of the other things uh, that this unlocks for you is saving time and money, right? You have access to this team of solutions architects, to training, some of the other things that we're gonna mention um, throughout this, which saves you time in investing in your own team, saves you time in figuring it out yourself. Um, and also, we're talking to customers all the time about what their technology problems are, what they're looking for in their current solutions and in the market, and we give that feedback directly to you on how to keep iterating your solution um, and how to keep innovating. Awesome. And speaking of innovation, some of you I've, I've worked with in the crowd, and you guys know I kind of live my, my life in a wheel, and we could spend the entire session talking about this and all the different programs that we have across this entire wheel. But a couple that really stick out for me are deliver more innovation, uh, with what Kelsey was saying, there's a lot of subject matter experts across AWS, everything from architecture to marketing to sales uh, to event strategy and even some other nuances across the partner network that are there. And, and really at the core of AWS, we're all builders, right? It doesn't have to be just the product teams or just the SDEs across the org that are the ones that are builders. Uh, myself and marketing, Kelsey, who builds programs and, and deploys them globally, we love to build. And so that's one of the big key thematics that we look towards whenever we're driving a partner relationship, is how can we foster that building culture? How can we continually innovate? And when we start to pair these things together, that's where we really try to figure out how do we go from innovation, which is a really cool idea, right, where we're taking something fun, we're building it together, but how do we actually get it to market? That's the complex part, right? How do you get credibility across AWS sales teams? How do you increase visibility across the AWS field? Uh, and more importantly, across our customers. As Kelsey was just mentioning, uh, our customers come to us on a daily basis. They're always asking us very unique questions around what we're seeing across the partner landscape in terms of ISVs, how we solve specific problems, what our partnerships look like, and how we can develop and cultivate a lot of trust. When you start kind of getting those solutions together and you're able to drive some of those wins, you're able to build some of that credibility, that goes into one of my other favorite bullet points, which is kind of promoting and selling your solutions, right? So it's, it doesn't behoove a lot of us to just get something out there and hope everybody buys it. We wanna be able to be, again, innovative. We wanna be able to deliver real value to customers. And that is kind of what unlocks a lot of the potential across our AWS field teams and our AWS sales teams. They want to hear those stories of innovation. They want to hear about that unique customer problem that you solved, how you can scale it, how you can continue growing it. Uh, and then, of course, you know, those, are, those are kind of the fun, uh, I'll say, executional pieces that happen when you're, when you're, when you're in this larger uh, wheel of a journey. But in the absence of a plan, and this is, this is going to be another core thematic of today, uh, in the absence of a plan and defining your APN journey, it's going to become very hard. Uh, again, some of you have worked with me out, out, uh, out there in the crowd, and, and you know that one of my mantras is no random acts of marketing, no random acts of business development. So while doing a lot of promotional and sales efforts are, are great, and they yield some decent results, uh, th usually they're not very scalable. And so one of the big key themes that we'll hit on today and another way to increase your maturity with AWS and really get a lot more traction out of your go-to-market strategy is to define kind of your APN journey, be honest with your maturity, and make sure you mirror that up with some of the AWS mechanisms. It's when those things come together that we're able to find a plan that's got a lot of continuity, but that also starts to deliver a lot of real value to customers, which again, creates that flywheel and helps things continually evolve. And again, to our very first bullet point, continually innovate. So what uh, we put together to talk to you about today is what we've called the APN partner journey. Um, it it's certainly is a journey, and we'll talk a little bit more about why that is. is. Uh, but instead of talking to you about all of our, our programs, interesting things, we'll do a little bit of that. We're mostly going to talk to you in terms of stories, in terms of partners that we've seen who have done it, and show you the, the ins and outs of what they did. Yes, deploying certain programs or, or doing certain sales efforts, as Chris mentioned, but we're mostly going to talk about first-hand experience and sort of that um, art and magic of, of being a good partner and things to look for. So we've broken down the journey into five specific stages. 
Uh, the build market sell is what you normally um, see within the APN messaging. You know, see a lot of stuff on our website. We'll talk about those uh, key elements. But we've kind of bracketed uh, it with some, some ones that we've seen based on partners that we've seen be really successful. So onboarding and iterate are two that we've added onto the journey to sort of say um, there's some, like we were just talking about planning and strategy. Mm -hmm. That's a huge part of, of what we do and making sure we have a strong foundation as a partnership. And then um, on our theme of innovation, uh, being able to iterate and constantly rethink our partnership and rethink what customers are looking for um, and keep moving with technology. And there's some specific nuances to, to the partner journey. Although this looks pretty linear, think about it more as, as a wheel. Again, I, I, you guys will hear that again. I, li I like to live my life in a wheel, but um, you might be a very mature partner with AWS today. That doesn't mean that you can't onboard new sales teams, new products, new marketing initiatives, uh, things of that nature. So look, look at onboard as a way Whenever you're adding something within your organization that you want AWS to be aware of, think about it in that onboarding mindset. And you follow the similar pattern. And within each one of these phases across build, market, sell, and iterate, we've developed a, a specific playbook and, and some rhythms that will help guide that journey to take out some of the guesswork of it. And of course, as Kelsey was just mentioning, once you get to iterate, that's really where things start to, to continually loop, right? That's the flywheel that we always talk about across AWS and across Amazon in general. But that level of iteration and innovation is what continually drives uh, kind of our partnership together. So again, look for this to be, to, you know, to be out, out here at reInvent, obviously. Uh, but it's going to be the new journey that you guys should be a, a part of. And again, each one of these will be broken down across marketing, sales, product, and of course, a lot of the uh, you know, architecture and solution support stages of the journey. So we'll start first with onboarding oh. and the strategy and planning process. So one of, one of, my, one of my favorites, right? In the absence of a plan, it's, you know, it's just a bunch of random acts of, of marketing, random acts of business development. So uh, we created a mechanism that will help us actually build a tangible plan. And we're not talking about you know, a really fancy PowerPoint and, you know, a, a deck of paper that's that thick. We're talking about something that's scrappy, something that allows us to develop a good hypothesis, get out there and test something in the market. So when you're sitting down with your partner development manager, make sure that you're coming up with an annual business plan. You're also creating a specific account plan. You're doing a readiness assessment. There are a myriad of programs across the APN that you as a partner can take advantage of. And it's not really a surprise. Finding out which one you should leverage and win sometimes can be a little bit of a mystery. And that's why the readiness assessment is key. It'll help you understand where you're at in terms of maturity. And it'll also help you do a little bit better of a job planning on how you'll execute this and leverage it within your, within your overall plan that you create. And then, of course, creating some of the key success factors and stakeholder alignment is, is very crucial. Once that's done, once you do this with your partner development manager, the big thing after this is you go into a go-to-market workshop. Sometimes these are day long, sometimes they're half day long, but we do a good job of getting all of our teams together. Partner solution architects on our side, folks from the marketplace, uh, people like myself from marketing, Kelsey from programs, uh, and then of course a couple of our sales teams. And then from the partner side, we like to have a lot of, uh, of the same kind of heads in there. Once we're able to build all of that together and we get everybody in the room talking kind of on the same page, if you will, it allows us to create a really solid go-to-market plan that's underpinned by a couple thematics that really drives our co-sell motions and it creates the schedule of activities that we'll do. Again, no random acts of marketing, no random acts of business development. We want to be very methodical with the way that we plan things out. Once that fun stuff is done, then it's really time to, to execute, right? Proof in the pudding. It's time to launch all of our initiatives. We want to be able to test these hypotheses, see how everything is starting to resonate in the marketplace, uh, and then figure out how do, we, how do we keep going? Do we scale things up? Do we remove certain hypotheses that we have, test something new? Uh, but this is really where we launch all of these plays. And then, again, back to our, back to our wheel. Uh, quarterly reporting and, and optimization. Now, I have this in kind of a quarterly mesh, uh, a motion. Now, some partners do this on a monthly basis. I've seen some partners do this every few weeks, depending on the services that they have and the integration that they have with us. But the big key thing is, it's really great to have a business plan and a business strategy. We've all sat in the same meetings, right, where you, know, you have a really good plan, everybody develops it, and then everybody leaves and nobody looks at it again. When you do this with your partner development manager, you want to leverage this as the review document for every meeting that you have. 
Pressure test the sales ideas that you have. Pressure test your marketing strategies. Pressure test the way that you're receiving uh, kind of customer feedback and gaining a little bit more mind share of how customers within you know, the broader ecosystem are receiving your message and if it's working out right. right? So this is kind of the, the overarching uh, process. And if you guys have not been through this yet, I urge you again to, to reach out to your partner development managers and uh, make sure that you, you, know, you go through this process. Again, whole framework and, and kind of methodology has been developed and it's, it's open now to, uh, to take advantage. Jeff. Um, another thing to, to mention, it was sort of up on one of the first slides, is that by being an EPN partner, as soon as you register in our ecosystem, you do have a partner development manager. You have somebody whose name is assigned to you, who's supposed to work with you and develop you. If you don't know who that person is, uh, you can go onto the, the EPN portal and find out who you're supposed to be working with. Perfect. Thank you. So, and, and here's to, to tee up kind of how this journey has worked. Uh, Kelsey's got, a, again, a fun uh, partner story that she'll be able to tell for us. So this is one of my, my favorite stories to tell, a real life example. Um, and it's actually a perfect example of why the, the model does not go from left to right, um, like the slide suggests with the arrows. Um, but really, it, it comes at any stage. So this is a story about a partner who we worked really closely with. We had a couple joint product launches together and joint announcements um, and had some really great traction with. Um, then over time, they ran into some key challenges, which I'm sure none of these are going to be completely foreign to anybody in the audience. Um, competition, right, in technology, there's always competition. So they had, were competing with other platform providers, other technology partners out there, and even with native AWS services. Um, they also had issues with existing positioning, or we say cloud and, and all in, or do we say hybrid, and how do we position that to the customer in a way that builds trust and confidence with them? And then account level friction, um, passing on discount structures to customers, making sure they're paying the lowest price that they possibly should be for their services and application on AWS. So none of these things are unique. What was unique with this partner is that all three were sort of escalating at the same time <laughs> um, and, and the roof was crashing down. So there's a couple things that we did uh, to move this relationship forward. And again, uh, now again, one of our most close partners, they'll have another Very product la launch later this week that you'll hear about um, that kind of shows you that how much we've overcome some of these things. So one of the first things that we did um, was get really great executive alignment. We got our leadership and their leadership in the same room. Um, and we're really honest. We, that previous slide, we talked about all three things that were escalating. There were some hurt feelings. There were some emails not uh, responded to on, on both sides. Um, and we really aired out our, our grievances and um, were really honest with each other about where we saw failings, where we saw customer experience lower than it should have been, um, and where we were having some struggles. The next thing that we did was craft a better together story. And this is why is uh, this partner and this technology better on AWS? Why is this better for AWS customers? What is this true alignment that brings us together that makes something unique that nobody else can offer? Um, and why is that better for our joint customers? And this is, needs to be something that's really authentic. We'll talk about this a little bit um, more in the session, but something that's really authentic that both sides and teams can really believe in um, and drive forward. If you don't have something honest at that foundation um, and something really true to work towards, uh, you're not, you're not going to have a successful journey together. The next thing that we did was really an execution. So we picked a handful of customer accounts to go into together. We did not pick the customers that had the baggage and had some previous issues. We picked fresh new customers and we knew there would be great alignment where um, this, this uh, sales motion was going to work really well, and we got our hands dirty. We had our solutions architects, their solutions architects, our sales people and marketing people, everyone sort of together um, in the deal, working through the motions and making sure we, we had the top best customer experience we thought we possibly could provide. Uh, this also led to a couple other things. It was our solution architects who were able to identify areas where there were repeatable motions that we could speed up, where there were some inefficiencies that we could overcome, and without being knees deep and in, in, in the weeds in the, some of these deals, they never would have figured that out that ended up helping benefit future customers um, that we went with jointly. The other part was presenting a unified front. So um, you as the partner and possibly a solutions integrator or um, consulting partner that you're working with, as well as AWS. Uh, there was a great customer example, a really big deal that we just seemed to not be able to get out of our own way. There was a problem the customer was facing and between the SI, the partner, and AWS, we were all three trying to approach it from a different way, and the customer was getting <laughs> totally confused in the process, saying, I just want this to work on AWS, why is this so difficult? Uh, so we ended up getting all of us together, represented the solution in a cohesive way to the customer. The problem was an easy one to solve, but when you came with a unified front and presented a unified solution to the customer, um, it went much, much smoothly. 
through some of these things, we were able to develop a um, custom POC program or proof of concept program. So some of the inefficiencies our solutions architects were able to operate out of. We had some technical documentation. Um, we had some solid messaging and we had some SI partners that we were really felt confident could deliver. Um, and we created a, a flywheel or repeatable motion that we could then keep working through for future deals. Uh, but there were only two or three wins at the very beginning, like I said. Um, so one of the key things is being able to celebrate those successes. It helps boost morale. It helps everyone realize that, yes, our Better Together story really is true. There are customers that are very excited and very happy about the experience we're able to deliver. Um, so don't forget to take time to celebrate the early wins. And also collecting feedback. So some of what those current customers were saying is, yes, this is great, but it would be awesome if you could develop this next thing, or I need, also need this available in EMEA, or whatever it was, and we could constantly go back um, and keep iterating, uh, but collecting feedback is, is a huge point um, that we like to emphasize, even with happy customers. So the next thing is about building with AWS. And like Chris said, we are builders at our core. This is an easy one for us to do and probably where you'll find teams get the most excited to build with you. But my uh, ask of you is to think big. It's one thing to add a new service to your uh, solution. It's one thing to launch in a new region. But really think from the customer backwards and what's going to make the customer experience the best it could possibly be. It's not going to be just one service or one application. It's going to be a full um, suite of applications and a full environment for the customer to operate in and make it the easiest for them. So um, Volkswagen was a company that we had the pleasure of working with earlier this year and crafting a really think big um, strategy around their entire industrial cloud all being on AWS. It wasn't just solution by solution. They really wanted to think much broader, uh, brought together you know, ProServe, account teams, uh, partner teams, um, resources from everywhere to really develop a big key plan. You will find that you will have lots of ready ears that this is something um, an area where you'd like to think a little bit bigger. We will be happy to do it with you. So, and across the build timeline, again, uh, when you go back and kind of look at, at some of the journey that we were just showing you previously, uh, you might be a, a pretty experienced partner with us, but build can continually happen. And so when you look at build, there's a couple of different mechanisms that you want to leverage as you're building a solution, a new capability, even a new route or path to market whenever you're working with AWS. And so first and foremost, utilize the AWS teams and support mechanisms. Again, uh, as, we've, as we've been saying, we're builders at our core. We love to help build new and unique, interesting solutions. And again, even if it's a, an otherworldly idea, it's something that really excites us and we really get energized about. So again, leverage the right teams. If, you're, if you haven't been introduced to those teams before, ask your partner development manager, to start doing some digging around different areas that you can explore for folks that can start digging in and helping you actually build and kind of bring some of these solutions to fruition. The second step, complete your well-architected review um, and leverage some of these funding options. Um, again, the well-architected review is, uh, I would say, a, a pretty critical step, right? It gives a lot of confidence and a lot of comfortability, not just with our sales teams, but also our customers. They want to make sure that, that things have kind of been gut checked, that it's going to work as properly as it says, right? And we've got the right kind of integration that's happening. Uh, number three, attain your AWS competencies in your core focus areas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, go ahead. Jump <laughs> One in. One thing I don't want to overlook is the, the funding options. Oh, uh, yes. Funding. So we think about uh, funding, or you hear funding on our, on our partner website, you usually think marketing, right? Yes. And if you are a certain tier, you will get a certain allocation of marketing dollars to spend um, every year, which is something you should definitely take advantage of. But funding is not just for marketing. Um, we have a whole uh, program, or several programs built around helping you build better, more innovative, more competitive solutions in the market. So don't forget to think about uh, funding, we're more than willing to invest with you in benchmarking, in uh, testing out new areas, um, and, and doing some customer betas, those kinds of things to help you get off the ground and running. Um, it's a huge area of funding for us. Yeah, thank you. And the, the, so step three, attain your AWS competency. So our, our sales teams uh, are always looking for competencies uh, because that, that's just one of the things that kind of gives that other stamp of approval. Additionally, as you continue to look from a marketing angle across different programs that you can leverage uh, from an AWS marketing point of view, some of those have prerequisites, and some of those prerequisites uh, are having a competency. So 
Take a look at the core function of your organization today. Find out what kind of competencies you could achieve, but also don't, don't look at it too narrowly. If you're a data and analytics partner, don't think about just data and analytics. You might be able to look across our financial services organization or government or education and healthcare and find out that your solutions have broader applicability, excuse me, broader applicability across a lot of different focus areas. So explore the different competencies that we have because that unlocks, again, a lot more broad potential uh, across kind of the awareness that you can develop with our field and with our sales teams. And then the last one, number four, this was one of the, the previous sites that we looked at, right? Once you've gone through the build pipeline, you've done steps one through three, this is really where you want to start looking at kind of the go-to-market planning uh, and just different ways to launch your generally available solution. As we've been talking about, the journey, although we, you know it looks good linear, it really is a constant iterative loop. So if you've got one solution that's generally available in AWS today that you've brought to market, but you're ready to add in two, three, four, five more services over the next 12 to 18 months, this is going to be the same kind of pipeline that you guys want to focus on. And if you work with your partner development manager, folks on the programs team, people across the marketing organization, they'll help you chart kind of this build timeline um, and, and try to you know, compress it as much as possible. I've worked with a lot of partners where we've seen things go up very quickly. Um, there's been other partners where it's been you know, years, you know, or two year long process. So it's, it's kind of unique to everyone, but again, there's mechanisms across each portion of this. And if it's ever felt that it's been a bit uh, ambiguous at times, again, that's where you want to leverage this framework. You want to leverage some of the good uh, experience that your partner development manager has to take you through this when you're looking at building new solutions. Anything else to add on to this one too? All right. So. Another true story, another uh, interesting partner. So we, we walked in a new partner uh, through our SaaS factory program, uh, kind of launch a, a data and analytics uh, product, uh, excuse me, uh, on AWS. And one of the big things that we were focusing on was surrounding them with other born in the cloud partners. It was a, a unique partnership where they actually really needed a little bit more of a breadth and depth of, of some additional partners to create kind of that full service solution. Once we got that incubation going, we were able to launch our first go-to-market play uh, around sensitive data discovery. From there, that's where kind of that flywheel or that, that mechanism started growing. You know, a lot of times I, I often see partners think really big. We just said, think really big. But when it comes time to get something in market, what's really critical is to look at where your sales teams are, where you've got good market presence, and where you've got a little bit of good branding, where, where customers know your name a little bit. You can get out there, you can test these solutions. Once we started doing this with this with a specific ISV, that allowed us to, to start looking at ways that we were gathering pipeline, we were getting wins together, uh, and most importantly, we were starting to get customer references. And in one of our previous slides, we were talking about collecting feedback. As we were getting customer references and we were understanding a little bit more of, of kind of our success with market penetration, we were realizing that there was a bit of a gap between free trials and uh, customers wanting ability to, to be able to go in, test something quickly, and then be able to spin it up quickly. So that was kind of a new thing we hadn't thought to do. It wasn't really a natural motion for the ISV at the time, uh, but we ended up building that in and that created, again, just yet another mechanism that made it easy for our sales teams to go in, sit down with customers and say, if you're experiencing this kind of problem, we can do a, a very quick POC, it's free, we can, we can take care of a lot of the pieces from this, we can spin everything up, and you can start testing it right away. That's, that's our sales team actually doing that on behalf, and then that's funneling the opportunity back to the ISV. Again, it helps get that flywheel going. So as we started going through this and we were developing these wins, um, we started to look at, okay, now that we've done this, how do we start branching out a little bit? And as I was just mentioning on the previous slide, you might be in one uh, specific competency area. Again, this one was data and analytics, but again, they had a really interesting story to tell across the financial services industry. So we, we made some introductions across our partner team. We worked on that competency area, and we created a lot of vertical specific messaging and kind of some core go-to-market thematics that allowed us to go out, test that from a FinServe point of view, and see how it was actually going to take off in the market. And again, this is just one really good story where each one of these phases really is kind of built, right? So this is still at the beginning of the journey, uh, and I would say with this specific partner, they kind of have a builder's mindset as well. They're constantly building something new. Even if it's an existing service on top of something that's mature in the marketplace, they're always thinking, what's that next question for the customer that we can answer or next vertical or focus area that we can really uh, you know, kind of lend our expertise to? So going to market. 
Um, you know, this, this is probably my biggest passion. It's, it's why I joined AWS. I, I love go-to-market strategy. I love working with partners. It's one of my most favorite things that I do. Um, and, you know, I, I, uh, again, I've worked with you, some of you out there in the, in the audience. Um, you guys have seen this slide before, I'm sure. Um, a lot of this might sound complex. And if you just focus on three core areas when developing your strategy with AWS and your go-to-market plan, focus on these things. Start with the customer. You guys know our level of customer obsession. It really is baked into our blood. Um, and when we focus on the customers, that's where we start to find the unique use cases that we can start driving, right? Now, there's a couple of nuances when we're looking at mutual customers. Sometimes we might have a direct one-to-one -one match where your primary or targeted uh, customer is the same customer that we're selling to. But sometimes you have somebody that falls outside that line or kind of in a you know, tertiary part of the buying cycle. So when you're open and, and very descriptive with our teams across sales, across marketing in the field, and you communicate those customer nuances, it helps us better understand the kind of programs that you can leverage and also how we can create our mutual value propositions together. And that actually lends itself right into the use cases. You don't want to just say, hey, we solve data and analytics problems, or hey, we do security for uh, you know, endpoint protection and, and things of that nature. It's, it's a bit too generic. We want to take the good brand that you have as an ISV. We want to take those unique customer pain points that you guys have spent a lot of time developing your businesses and answering those questions for, and then we want to be able to develop that mutual use case with AWS. Once you do that, those are the first two things that come together. Last piece, maturity. This is where, um, this is where I always heed a lot of caution in, in working with partners. Sometimes it's easy to get really excited about you know, the breadth that we have as an organization, uh, but oftentimes some mechanisms aren't really there uh, to support uh, a full, I'll say, go-to-market launch. So it's very important to be honest about the maturity that you have as an organization, how you're able to execute marketing programs, how you're able to execute sales, what product support, product innovation look like, because that'll also help us understand where you are in your own maturity life cycle, and again, make better recommendations around how we can create a really good tangible plan with one another. Whoops, I don't know what I just hit. There we go. So that, that, once, the, once those things come together, right, and strategy lives right in the middle of it, um, our sales teams are really looking for a couple specific things. Um, and, and it might seem like a mystery to crack, but I, I promise you it really isn't. The first is a strong go-to-market strategy around AWS. Right? They want to understand how we talk to mutual customers. They want to understand how our, mu uh, how our use cases can have some mutual intersection. Uh, and they also want to be able to understand the maturity and kind of the market landscape that you guys serve, right? So they want to have that in place first. That's kind of the, the first check mark. The second one is defined capabilities and some differentiation. Now, just a, a quick pause on this one. It's not always about tit for tat around your competitors that might be in the marketplace. Instead, when we focus on the customer, when we really drive to that why of we're going to market together, the differentiation kind of takes care of itself. Everybody has got a unique story. You have your customer that's kind of your, your beacon, the one that's got the microphone that's you know, kind of shouting your good, your good story out there. That's what our sales teams want to know. They want to know why a customer be, was able to solve a really complex and challenging problem with your solution alongside AWS. And then, of course, a couple of the other bullet points that fall underneath that with the good customer story is the competencies, wins, different references, different other case studies that come together. Uh, and then the last piece, and this is, this is where I'll, I'll, I'll advise you, you all to, to create kind of a communication plan. Think about it almost as like a PR or a marketing strategy where you always have a megaphone and you're communicating very early, very often these wins and the good stuff that you're hearing out in the marketplace. Oftentimes I see partners create a really great go-to-market strategy. We get a lot of good traction going in the marketplace, but some areas just don't receive as much attention as they might need to, right? So you might have a really great presence in the Bay Area, in Dallas, and in Chicago, but you might not be broadcasting some of that success to our field teams in Atlanta or Tampa, or if you're international, if you're in London or somewhere in APJ. So you want to make sure that you take a look at everywhere your market footprint could be and create just a small marketing and PR plan so that you're continually evangelizing these good customer stories and how all these things intersect together. That's what our sales teams are really looking for because when they're sitting down with their customers, which is their most valued asset, 
their customers are always asking them, hey, what's happening in the DevOps space? What's happening with security? What's happening with you know, AI and ML or, or IoT? They want to know those things. And our, our sales teams want to be able to advocate and talk about the good solutions that they're seeing that are out there. So unless you don't have that megaphone and you're not you know, continually broadcasting these good success stories, they're not going to have much to talk about. So work with your marketing teams, work with some of your PR teams, and figure out a good communication strategy to just make this a natural muscle that's happening as you're going to market with us as an organization. Then this, this is kind of an interesting slide. And a lot of you, I'm sure, have experienced uh, different ebbs and flows of this. Um, you know, opportunity workflows uh, kind of work bi-directionally, right? There's a lot of programs that we have where we will refer you guys opportunities. There's a lot of things that you will do on your own good go-to-market nature where you'll refer opportunities back into us. There will be times in the market where we've got certain programs um, or events for that nature uh, that might amplify some of these things. And you might see a little bit more lead flows and opportunity flows coming in from AWS. There will be other times in the marketplace where you might have more of that presence. It could be your own shows. It could be some of the big marketing campaigns that you have, big sales pushes, PR activities. And that will drive more opportunities back to us. But one of the big critical things is to, to just understand that there's a little bit of a bi-directional flow here. And you want to be able to communicate this with your sales teams, with your marketing teams, to know that uh, these ebbs and flows will happen. Um, and, and especially with, you know, with this piece is, um, and one area I, sometimes gives me a little bit of heartburn, we'll see a lot of really great in-market activity, uh, a lot of leads, a lot of opportunities flowing in, and oftentimes partners might not have the ability to capture all those leads. They might not be able to, to really nurture them and mature them in a meaningful fashion. And so sometimes uh, that pipeline goes dry. Top of the funnel metrics look awesome. Bottom of the funnel metrics filled with question marks. Right? And again, that can happen sometimes on both sides. So it's very important, it gets back to the maturity piece. It's very important that we work together to figure out how our opportunity flow works, where our maturity sits, and if there's any hiccups that we might foresee, to just communicate that stuff early and often. Early and often right? We can scale things up and scale things down to make sure that we have the right kind of flows and we're building that muscle so we're getting a good rhythmic pattern for wins and how we develop our, our go-to-market cadence together. One of the things that I'll add on here too is that um, for AWS referred opportunities, these are account managers handing you their customer, right? Their most, their, their baby, their most valued asset. They're handing you and entrusting to you to be able to take care of them, to be able mm -hmm. to deliver that solution. They've seen one of your case studies. They, they've heard your praise from the partner manager or, or success manager, whoever it might be, and they're handing you their, their baby. Please make sure that you have a method um, to be able to capture that lead, to be able to nurture that customer and give them the kind of experience that we would in-house or that our, our account managers would be happy with. And you will believe that that will go like wildfire. If that account manager sees that you've made their, their customer happy, um, you'll have five more account managers calling you. That's, that's the biggest place that you could earn trust with our teams is by taking care of our customers. Um, the other thing that Chris mentioned was around a megaphone. One of the best ways that you can have that megaphone and keep blasting it is referring AWS opportunities. So this is, hey, I've helped this customer out, or hey, I'm halfway through working with this, this customer and I want to make you aware, or I could use some help or support. Um, the more that you register opportunities and make us aware, the account manager's aware that you're in with their customer, that you're trying to deliver them a great experience, um, that again will build your credibility, will build your name, and earn trust with our teams. And you know, there, there was, a, was a couple slides back where we were talking about kind of that unified voice. There's a lot of times where you as a partner, you've got great business development and marketing motions on your own, right? Like you, you, that's why you guys are here. You guys have built really good businesses. Um, oftentimes what will happen is you guys are in an account. I was just dealing with this uh, literally last week and, and this week. Um, but you guys will be in an account and you might have a really cool win. And there might be an AWS sales counterpart that's not aware of that win. And I've seen this happen time over time where, you know, you as an ISV are growing, the account that we're managing together is growing, but we're not talking together, we're not providing that, that kind of unified front. So when you have that level of continuity in your plan and kind of in that communication strategy together, that's where you'll see a lot more activity, as Kelsey was just mentioning, coming through uh, from, from, you know, kind of an opportunity creation point of view. If you go in again and, and sell a, a very interesting solution to one of our customers and that unlocks some areas of innovation for us, it's really cool because it, it almost takes all that work off the salesperson's plate. It allows them to go in and figure out how they can continually evolve and help that customer innovate. And if you're doing this in tandem, it again unlocks a little bit more of kind of that land and expand strategy that you would have that should be part of that larger go-to-market plan that you guys have created together. 
So again, some of the key steps with this, um, I'm, I, I'd like to start with, with start with the why, but again, customers are really the, the forefront of everything. Work backwards from the customer, right? Help us understand the unique nuances that you guys solve. That leads us to the interesting question of why customers buy. And then lastly, once we, once we develop that rhythm, that's where we can start creating a lot of these customer success stories together uh, and make sure that they're publicly referenceable and, and those, good, those good measures, right? That's, that's what helps get a lot of good momentum going when you're looking at different ways to create sales alignment across your, your journey with, with us and your go-to-market strategy. So an example of this, um, this, is, this is kind of a fun one. So Datadog, uh, it, it, was, it was interesting. There was a little bit of consternation at the beginning. Um, we, we worked with them uh, to, to try to create a, a very interesting and aligned plan. And, and again, a little bit of consternation, kind of like Kelsey's example in the, in the beginning part. Um, and the bi-directional opportunity workflows were, were kind of facing outwards, right? There, there wasn't a whole lot of collaboration that was happening in there. So in February, we went through the go-to-market workshop planning process, which we told you guys about. And uh, it was really interesting. We got a lot of good stuff documented. They had a litany of marketing activities that they were doing, all great on their own, same on our side not a lot of continuity. We found two key go-to-market thematics that underpinned all of our motions that we wanted to do from a marketing and sales angle, from a product angle even. And once we got that, within about 90 days, uh, Laura, who, who was very kind to, to provide us this quote, uh, they actually saw an increase of about 25 or 30% of opportunities originating from AWS. And a big portion of that wasn't something new that they had developed. It was that level of continuity around how they were marketing, driving leads, maturing them, and how we're creating, uh, I'll say, collaboration across our sales teams. Once that stuff got together, it just started churning. Um, and they've, they've had a, a pretty successful year this year so far with us in our, in our partner strategy. Now, again, having that documented is very nice because at the end of the year, we're going to look across this and we're going to be able to beat up some of the things that were, that were working and were not working, figure out what do we scale and keep, what do we, you know, get away from our plan, and what are some new hypotheses based on the mutual wins that we've developed over the course of the year where we can go into 2020 and figure out new ways to continue you know, educating and, and servicing our customers together. This is another interesting example um, of, of a partner journey that's um, been a little bit unique. So this is with a media and entertainment partner that we worked really closely with. They had um, actually formally announced a partnership with a, a different cloud provider. <laughs> we had sort of stumbled across this uh, unique alignment that we had with our elemental media service, um, their technology they were able to provide and uh, deliver sort of a, a niche in the market, something that nobody else was able to deliver to customers um, that was really, really compelling for, for both of us. So we, again, went through this strategy session and go-to-market workshop, really identified um, what this was, what messaging we needed to bring it all together, and um, create some, some closer alignment with our team. So not only with the elemental media service, also with our AIML um, tooling and product group, uh, thought there was an interesting uh, play there. And it ended up being such a compelling solution that um, at NAB, the big media and entertainment conference, we ended up launching the solution at our booth because it was so important uh, to our customers that they were able to um, leverage the solution and the technology was so unique. Uh, that was a, a big way we were able to, to boost the partner's presence and, and jointly launch the solution together. Uh, another key thing that they did was they didn't stop innovating. As soon as Amazon recognition was out there in the market, they were adopting it, they were incorporating it into their solution. Um, and one of the things that they did as well around this time was leverage our well-architected program. So we went through the well-architected review, made sure things were, were optimal for our joint customers, um, and we sort of stumbled upon an, an opportunity to containerize their solution, which is something that they're working on um, jointly with our teams at the moment. Uh, and throughout this whole process, they really saw the value of creating this integrated relationship with um, sharing our, our product team data back and forth, with working really closely and doing some of these joint launches and really targeting a specific set of customers where we, we both had a, had a niche and the use case really made sense. Um, and so they started creating their own channel for other partners uh, to create a full end-to-end -end experience for their joint customers um, modeled based on the partnership model that we developed. So lastly, selling with AWS, the, the really fun one. Yeah, the, the very fun one. All right, this is, this is the big one to, to kind of crack. So these are actually a couple sales mechanisms. I'm going to hit them from a marketing point of view. 
Kelsey will talk about them a little bit more from, from uh, some of the sales uh, unique ways that we've kind of leveraged them. But uh, think about these five areas as, as really your website strategy with AWS. I, I'm sure a lot of you have kind of asked, how do we get more site presence across AWS? It's these five mechanisms. Our customers, our field teams, our sales teams, they all leverage each one of these in a unique way to figure out how they can get an ISV solution, uh, a better understanding of it, how they can get it in front of our customers. So when you're working, again, from a marketing point of view, take a look at each one of these areas, figure out, is your value proposition aligned? Are you really talking about the fun nuances and customer problems that you're solving? Uh, and most importantly, as you're updating those, Make sure that the site properties on your own websites reflect this, right? Again, getting back to, to the, the why behind the customer, if a customer comes to our website, say uh, Marketplace, and they're looking for a specific solution, but they want to go check out your page uh, before they, they click buy or before they really invest any more time, you want them to have a really good journey that's got a lot of continuity where they see the value prop, where they see the unique use cases that you solve, and they understand kind of our partnership together, right? So again, think about this as kind of your site strategy uh, from a marketing point of view to make sure that your site, our sites are mirrored up and you're leveraging each one of these. And this is really sort of one of the key ways that AWS brings you closer to customers. These are some of the bigger web properties that attract different types of customers um, and that help you go through different selling motions. So obviously the AWS Marketplace being listed there and some of our curated pages, um, or even from a different page, having a buy now on Marketplace, right, is a really easy option for, for customers who are looking to do that. Um, there's the Partner Solutions Finder, which our, our sales teams uh, leverage quite often to be able to find the right partner for their customer. Um, and they'll look again for some of those differentiation icons or something else to tell, that, tell them that the solution's been validated and you should trust this partner, um, in addition to, to case studies that you can find on there. There's some other neat mechanisms like solution space where you can deliver a fully comprehensive solution to a customer um, with, with uh, other partnership aspects if, if necessary. You're bringing another technology partner together or you're uh, able to list a consulting offer um, in a particular region. That's really compelling for, for customers and speeds the, the time to market. Um, the other thing is AWS Quick Starts. This is something where you can instantly spin up a demo environment that shows what your solution can do on AWS. Something that makes it really easy for our solutions architects in our AWS field to be able to demo right in a meeting with a customer what this would look like, what the look and feel is, and helps build confidence that this runs really well on us. These are really unique platforms that you can leverage um, that build a lot of trust with our customers and our field. Another one that I'd be remiss not to mention is the workload migration program. So this is something that's um, relatively new that we've been developing, and it sort of started with uh, working from a customer backwards. A uh, customer says, hey, I have um, an Atlassian application. I'm trying to move it to the cloud. I have a global business. Um, surely somebody else has done this. Surely somebody else is running this on AWS. Can you tell me how it's done? Can you give me some best practices, make this easier for me to do? Um, and a lot of this is account manager talking to account manager um, and, and sort of word of mouth. And so we decided to create this program that really um, puts together a couple key elements. So one is that technical enablement. So we're taking those best practices from the customer who's already done this. We're taking some of the technical documentation, reference architecture, that kind of stuff that's already been developed, picking the minds of our architects who worked on that project, and created something that's scalable and easy for um, a new customer to pick up and run with, saves them a lot of time in, in migrating. Um, as well as a joint investment aspect of this. So we're, we're discounting some of the AWS services. We're um, introducing them to, to partners or um, being able to lo lower the cost of this migration uh, based on economies of scale. And um, the APN partner community. So being able to find trusted SI partners in different regions, yours or ours, that are able to deliver this for customers in a really speedy fashion. Um, so this works really well for partners who have a huge on-premise customer base that they want to move more quickly. This is a way that we invest with you and create a really easy uh, motion for customers to adopt, really easy for our field to be able to talk about and articulate to customers, this is how much it's going to cost, this is how much, how long it will take. Here's another customer who's already done this multiple times. Um, as well, this is a, an, an easier motion if you are a solution that helps this migration effort, right, or helps optimize some of these um, migration pieces. This is a really key program for you to be involved in. And there's uh, a, a running theme. I'm sure you guys have heard uh, migrations to the cloud are kind of a big deal for us. Um, so there's a lot of different programs that you can leverage. So uh, in addition to the workload migration program, work with your partner development manager to find out all the different uh, migration programs that exist. Uh, again, if, uh, if there, there's a lot of questions that we get in the marketplace around kind of these issues. So don't hesitate to, to kind of always, always continually ask. Don't just ask once a year. Uh, I would say ask on a, on a very regular 
regular basis because there's always different ways that we're you know, iterating internally to figure out how we can continually fuel kind of that, you know, the, the migration to the cloud uh, motion together. Um, and this is what we hear from our partners who've leveraged this program. Uh, the first example being Magento, where now they have about 70% of their deals in North America are being sold as cloud first because it's that easy um, for their, their sales teams to articulate and for our account teams to, to understand and um, to speed the motion um, in the sales cycle there. Uh, now they're using it as part of their strategy to expand worldwide. You'll also see it with our partner um, IT Methods and um, bringing more customers to AWS, and it's completely changed their, their migration strategy um, and how they, they talk about migrating to the cloud. So the other thing that we'll talk about a little bit too is AWS Marketplace. So it's not, um, if you're not familiar with it, please go, go check it out. It is not the um, end all be all for every customer. It's not always the place where your customers are most likely to buy, but it does have some really compelling things. Again, starting with the customer first. So customers do like to buy on AWS Marketplace because it has flexible consumption models, because it does away with a lot of the contracting and, and things that would take a lot of time, um, and, their, and their flexible contracting models. Uh, one of the other things is that it's easy, it's secure, you can have almost instant deployment once you buy something, um, because it's already set up for them. And the last is having a cons single consolidated billing platform where you can see what you're purchasing across a global platform, it can be, or global company, it can be really complex, um, and what you're spending on different uh, ISVs and AWS services combined. And, and again, Marketplace is, a, is another area, uh, a couple, couple of unique points here. Another part of a site strategy, right? It's another area that customers can come and they can procure your solutions. That's, that, that's a, it's an incredible way to, uh, to, to buy some solutions. But in addition to that, Marketplace also has some very unique marketing programs that you can leverage. So as you're working with your partner development manager to build out your go-to-market strategy with AWS, make sure that you're looking across Marketplace and some of the nuanced programs that they have that will help drive some of the business across Marketplace. Um, and you know, one of the new things I think I've seen come up, I've actually worked with a couple customers on this, um, actually in the last couple weeks, uh, the customers came to us and they were very interested in finding different ways to do governance and cost management across their entire IT strategy. These are very, very, very large customers of ours. And they wanted a, a, an easier way to procure ISV solutions. They wanted a better way to start planning uh, for, for that mode of procurement. And they wanted an easier mode to, to manage some of those partners as well. So they worked, you know, they worked with us to kind of put that procurement cycle in, in play. Uh, and then the fun piece about this is we also sat down alongside them uh, and mapped out uh, about 35 different ISV solutions across a myriad of specific technology requests that they had uh, that they would end up you know, kind of planning for the next 12 to 18 months. So from a procurement angle, it's kind of interesting because procurement's starting to get into the game a little bit more now and, and kind of help you know, guide some of the IT uh, purchasing decisions across the board. So again, very interesting thing to talk with your partner development manager about. Make sure you've got a really good strategy behind uh, different marketplace initiatives if that's something that's right for, for your business. So, and one, one big thing, right, none of this happens overnight. Leads don't roll in right away. I, as a marketing guy, I wish I could, like, let something loose out, out in the field and all of a sudden my pipeline would be full and I've got all these, you know, sales coming in and, and everybody's happy. That's just not the way that it works, right? It doesn't work at your own organization like that. It doesn't work across our organization like that. What, what needs to happen is, again, that level of continuity with a good go-to-market strategy that allows us to create that right rhythm and some of those, those motions that we just continually flex and develop that muscle together so that we can ensure that we're actually driving a path uh, towards you know, a scalable and, and repeatable go-to-market framework. Um, and as you're doing this, it's going to help you earn trust with a lot of the subject matter experts across our field. They want to see, uh, they want to see that continual effort, that continual level of innovation. They want to understand how you're earning trust, not just internally, but also with our customers. Um, and I would say that on average, uh, I would see, you know, it takes around six months to develop kind of the, that quality of muscle, right? So make sure that you're looking at this from a long-term point of view. I'd love that if, it, if we could snap our fingers, then it would happen instantly. Unfortunately, that's just not the way that it works. Which, again, leads to our last point, right? It's consistency. When our sales team see this, when our marketing team see this, and our product team see this, it's, this is how we develop a lot of good trust within the organization. It's how you develop a lot of trust with our, with our customers. And again, how you can continually scale uh, and kind of build your, your overall go-to-market strategy with AWS. So the very last part um, of the journey that we've talked about is iterate. So this is really the one um, where we see 
the, the long, long term partner relationships that, that really do last um, sort of live and, and evolve in this area. So it can be increasing your marketing footprint, right? We talked about a partner who went uh, from a data governance use case um, and were able to market it and reposition their solution for financial services companies in particular. That was a bigger leap that they took with us and a different way to think about marketing their solution that ended up evolving over time. So don't, don't ever lose sight of it. additional markets that you could be um, coming into, whether it's a vertical or an actual new location or, or geo where you're expanding your business. Um, the other piece of that is power of enablement. We're constantly doing innovation days. We're constantly doing hackathons and different things to keep your team fresh um, and their abilities um, to play around with AWS and be aware of the latest services. Always keep um, up with that education plan and, and leverage some of the things that are available to you. And again, that, that iteration phase is, is that, new, that new element that we're bracketing with, with the journey. And again, we've got a lot of mechanisms that we've developed uh, that can help with this piece. Um, and some partners that I've worked with uh, over the last couple of years here, um, it, it's been kind of interesting. You know, they've, they had a really strong, one of them had a very strong North American presence, and they were looking to expand uh, out into EMEA, specifically starting in London. So we started working on kind of this market expansion idea with them. Um, they started hiring up, getting some good sales uh, folks over there. They started getting some good marketing field teams over there. Once they had some of those mechanisms in place, Iterate was really that way for we go all the way back again to our one of our previous slides, uh, back into kind of onboarding and building, right? We had to onboard our EMEA teams. We had to let them know that there is an ISV we've been working with, that we've got a lot of good stories, a lot of good customer traction with, and now we're going to be able to expand their market footprint into EMEA. From there, it just goes right through that, back through that cyclical motion, right? We build a solid plan, we test the hypotheses around how it's going to impact our EMEA regions, and then from there, we're able to figure out can we scale this? Should we scrap it? Should we develop a new hypothesis? Or where do we continue to, to grow? So make sure that you're always keeping an eye on iteration. Again, this is going to be one of our big core thematics uh, for this presentation. Never stop pressure testing the market. Never stop pressure testing ways that you can solve really cool, unique uh, problems for your customers. Because it's something that we're looking for. And we're building a lot of mechanisms to help you as partners uh, kind of develop that muscle with us. One thing I'll, I'll add on oh, to yeah. this is, um, we'll have to lead into your, your next thing, yeah, is yeah, about, yeah, that's good. Uh, documenting the story and documenting the process, right? We've talked about yes. building an account plan. We've talked about documenting some of your customer success stories using that megaphone. Um, it can be one of the most valuable things that you have because it does speed up this process. There's a, a born in the cloud partner we've been working with for, for many years. They started out on AWS and they sort of came into our mm. annual planning session last year and said, okay, what else is there? We've done this program, we've done that program. Um, we're growing, you're growing, but come on, there's gotta be something else. Yep. Let's keep this interesting and exciting. Um, and they hadn't expanded yet into the, the APAC region that hadn't been something that they've seen a lot of success with. And we said, let's, let's tackle that as our next thing. Because we already had some great customer success stories, because we already had a plan and strategy and messaging that worked, it was really easy for us to educate our new teams on what's this better together story, how does this help customers no matter where they are. Um, they've been one of our fastest growing technologies in, in APAC this year. So, which, and again, the documentation piece of that is, 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 uh, is pretty poignant. So, big question. Um, have you created a comprehensive strategy with AWS for 2020? It's December. Uh, we, you know, the, it's time to, to put the pedal to the metal. If you have created a good comprehensive strategy, when was the last time you gut checked it? When was the last time you, you pressure tested it? Um, so, if you haven't done it yet, please, please, please reach out to your partner development manager. We have all the frameworks developed to make this a pretty streamlined process to make sure that it's well documented, leverage all the good stuff that, that you guys have seen here today. Uh, and of course, there's a lot more that you can dig into. There's a lot of depth across every area that we've covered, but it's important that you guys do get your strategy uh, created. So we have covered a ton today. And the, the, I know the journey is complex. It's not easy. Again, I wish that we could snap our fingers and we'd all just have you know, the, the most amount of success that we could possibly ever imagine. Um, but you know, we've got all the programs, we've got all the tools, uh, and all the different teams across different subject matter areas to help you guys. So make sure that you, again, you work with, with all those teams to build uh, you know, kind of the, the right plan. And, and looking into 2020, you know, let's, let's keep building. Yeah, let's keep marketing. Let's keep driving business. And again, one of the big core thematics for today, let's never stop innovating. Let's continually build some really cool things together. And uh, again, we wanted to thank you guys so much for, for attending our, our session today.